On the morning of October 15, 1991, a bowling ball fell from space onto the planet. Or at least that's what it actually seemed like to the flying eye cosmic ray detector. The experiment, conducted in Utah in the United States, detected a particle with the energy of a bowling ball at 40 km per hour, colliding with the atmosphere of our planet. The collision caused a cascade of secondary particles that rained down on the planet's surface. And this event was a cosmic ray, a particle from space hitting our atmosphere. Cosmic rays are not rare. They are a constant phenomenon. But cosmic rays with the energy of this event had never happened before. Worse, they were considered impossible. And they kind of still are. This event was the result of a single particle traveling at almost the speed of light. And its origin is still a complete mystery. The event was so dramatic that the particle was nicknamed the Oh My God particle, reflecting a reaction of shock. The Oh My God particle event represents the pinnacle of a nearly century-old mystery. Cosmic rays are radiation that rains down from space into our atmosphere, and we discovered them in 1936, and to this day, we know almost nothing about them. In 1990, one of the few certainties about cosmic rays was that their maximum energy, called the GZK limit, postulated a maximum energy of 50 hexa-electron volts. Electron volts are a common measure of energy in particles. The LHC, humanity's largest particle collider, generates collisions with 13 tera-electron volts, or 13 TeV of energy. The energy associated with the GZK limit of 50 exa-electron volts, or 50 EeV, is 4 million times more energy than that produced in collisions at the LHC here on Earth. The particle detected on October 15, 1991, had more than 300 exa-electron volts, or 300 EV. And this was more than six times the theoretical limit, literally inconceivable. So, the most obvious question was, what in the universe is creating particles so fast and so energetic? Hey, Pedro here. This video you are watching was originally in Portuguese, my native language. This is the attempt of our team to translate it to English, and I sincerely hope you enjoy it. Your feedback is extremely important to us. Now, back to the video. Nobody knows. Cosmic rays are a constant of nature raining down on our atmosphere, and we know almost nothing about their origin. And to make matters worse, ultra-high-energy cosmic rays seem to violate the laws of physics by exceeding the GZK limit. The theoretical energy limit of cosmic rays, known as the GZK limit, was deduced by three physicists, Kenneth Grison, Georgi Zatsipin, and Vadim Kuzmin, in 1966. And the reason for the limit is relatively simple. The emptiness of space is not perfectly empty. It is filled with radiation, with light. And this light is especially low-energy light, called cosmic background radiation. For most objects moving through the void of the universe, this fact is relevant. But the chance of you encountering and being affected by the cosmic background radiation increases as your speed and energy increase. For a particle as fast as the Oh My God particle, interacting with the cosmic background radiation is practically certain. And because of this, the particle must quickly lose its energy and decelerate below the GZK limit. The problem is that this did not happen. We detected a particle far above the theoretical limit. And with the possibility of the limit being violated, new cosmic ray experiments were on alert for more particles with absurd energies that were found. Experiments with cosmic rays showed that violations of the GZK limit happened often, which does not mean that the limit is a useless prediction. Events that violate the limit are much rarer than events that do not. The most obvious possibility is that there was a source of cosmic rays so close to Earth that there was no time for the cosmic ray to lose energy and conform to the limit. However, a source of such energetic cosmic rays near the Earth should be extremely obvious, a very bright and energetic astronomical object, and there is nothing like that in our cosmic neighborhood. Which means the GZK limit is wrong, but not completely because cosmic rays that violate the limit are much rarer than cosmic rays below the energy limit. There is something missing, and we do not know what it is. Ultra-high energy cosmic rays might have so much energy that a theory of quantum gravity is needed to describe them correctly, which is precisely the most difficult open problem in modern physics. Okay, so we don't know how cosmic rays above the GZK limit maintain their energy while traveling through space. But then, can we at least answer where they are coming from? Unfortunately, no, we don't know either. And before you get discouraged, let's review what we do know about cosmic rays. Cosmic rays are particles that come from space and hit our atmosphere. 
creating showers of new particles. The exact composition of cosmic rays is quite diverse. Many of them are nuclei of elements from the periodic table, such as hydrogen, helium, oxygen, nitrogen, and so on. The proportion of which elements make up the cosmic rays follows the composition of our own universe. Hydrogen and helium are by far the two most common elements, both in the universe and in cosmic rays. We do not know exactly which particle the Oh My God particle was, but it is most likely that it was a hydrogen nucleus, which is a free proton. Cosmic rays can also be other less common types of particles, and among these the most important are particles without electric charge, such as the neutron. Cosmic rays with electric charge can and are deflected in their trajectory by magnetic fields around space, so they do not travel in a straight line. And it is because of this that it is not easy to know where in space a cosmic ray came from. Cosmic rays without electric charge, such as neutrons, are much less affected by magnetic fields, and they carry more reliable information about their origins. There are basically two ways to try to find out where these cosmic rays come from. The first is to detect many cosmic rays and use this large amount of data to remove the deflection effect by magnetic fields. And here, having high energy is an advantage, because the faster a cosmic ray is, the less time it has had to be deflected by magnetic fields. The most mysterious cosmic rays, which are those that violate the GZK speed limit, may end up being the most useful for studying the origin of cosmic rays in general. The other strategy is to try to correlate the arrival of charged cosmic rays with the arrival of neutral particles, such as for example neutrons and high-energy neutrinos, since neutral particles are not as deflected by magnetic fields in space. There are two major experiments searching for ultra-high-energy cosmic rays, the Telescope Array in Utah, looking for signals from the Northern Hemisphere sky, and the Pierre Auger Observatory in Argentina, watching the skies of the Southern Hemisphere. And these cosmic ray observatories do not detect the original particles. What they detect is the shower of new particles and light signals generated when an extremely energetic particle collides with our atmosphere. The particle shower from a single ultra-high-energy cosmic ray can cover several square kilometers. And because of this, observatories are sets of detectors spread over a huge area. By using the information carried by the particle shower, it is possible to determine the energy of the original cosmic ray and its approximate direction. And by combining this data with information from other experiments, such as neutrino detectors, it is possible to create a map of exactly where these cosmic rays are coming from. And this map points to something curiously mundane. The distribution of high-energy cosmic rays coincides with the distribution of matter in the universe. That is, the more matter there is in a region of space, the more cosmic rays that region produces. And even regions with less matter should produce cosmic rays with some frequency. What this means is that even cosmic rays of extreme energies are not produced by extreme events in the universe. If particles like the Oh My God particle were a consequence of supernovae, cosmic rays would be correlated with these events and not with the general distribution of matter. And if cosmic rays were only a consequence of galactic black holes, they would come only from the centers of galaxies. So, cosmic rays, including the extreme ones, must be a consequence of relatively mundane events for the universe. Cosmic rays carry information about the day-to-day -day nature of the universe. Which, honestly, is a breath of fresh air, because this is the first video about extreme astronomical events that won't end with supernovae. So, what are our best candidates for producers of ultra-high-energy cosmic rays? The first possible explanation is events of extreme gravitational disruption. This event happens when a star passes very close to some extremely heavy object, such as a black hole, close enough to be pulverized by the difference in gravitational force in different parts of the star, which is the so-called tidal effect. The process of destroying a star generates extremely intense electric and magnetic fields due to the enormous flux of charged particles from the destroyed star. Basically, electrical currents of astronomical proportions. And these currents could act as particle accelerators, generating ultra-high energy cosmic rays. Even involving black holes and stars, these events are not exactly extreme on the scale of the universe. They must happen once every 100,000 years per galaxy, which on a cosmic scale is quite rapid. Some data on ultra-high energy cosmic rays suggest that many come from a specific type of galaxy, which are stellar galaxies. As the name suggests, these are galaxies that favor the formation of large stars, like the Triangulum Galaxy. All stars produce solar wind, which is the ejection of matter due to extreme magnetic fields. Stars much larger than the Sun might be capable of creating much more extreme magnetic fields and producing even more accelerated particles. A possible rarer event could be a process of repeated particle acceleration. This would happen when a charged particle gets trapped within a magnetic field, being accelerated back and forth again, and again, and again, until it reaches absurd speeds. 
And when the particle finally escapes, it will have the energy of an ultra-high energy cosmic ray, possibly above the GZK limit. One of the difficulties in studying cosmic rays is that they probably do not have just these two explanations, but several complementary explanations. It is quite likely that cosmic rays are generated by numerous events, including the two I mentioned, as part of the life process of black holes, or even in supernovae less frequently. Cosmic rays should not have a single and simple origin. Understanding the origin of cosmic rays likely means understanding how different types of cosmic rays, with different energies and compositions, are generated in the diversity of events in our universe. The mystery of cosmic rays is not linked to understanding the extremes of our universe, such as supernovae and black hole collisions, but rather to understanding the more common events capable of generating particles with energies that seem extreme even to us. Perhaps an event as extreme as the Oh My God particle is a consequence of a common event for a universe as vast as ours. Astronomers often use the term window to describe what can be explored through different signals that reach Earth from space. Sunlight is a window into solar physics, X-rays are a window into the high-energy universe, and infrared light is a window into the distant past. In this way, cosmic rays might be our window into the common universe. For the type of event that is inconceivable to us, but for the universe is just another day like any other. What else will we see looking through the window of cosmic rays? I would like to know your opinion in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and give a thumbs up to this video, it helps us a lot. Thank you very much and see you next time.